report, VBS is over and it was a smashing success. Yeah. We had probably uh, 25 or so workers between the adults and the teenagers, and they were on the spot and got it done. We had about 50 kids. So this was a hopping place all week long. And uh, I feel like we had an opportunity to really have an outreach into our community, make a difference in people's lives. So I know I see some folks at work this week. If you were a helper this week, thank you so much. We so we so appreciate your, your volunteering, your efforts. And uh, uh, I keep thinking this is the opportunity we've had to change lives. And uh, that's what we're about, isn't it? So, all right, a couple of uh, quick announcements. After church this morning, we're having our all church barbecue, and I have it on good authority, my own eyewitness, that uh, we have professional barbecuers on the job and working. So you'll want to stick around for that. I think that's going to be, uh, you know, a great time. Be sure and get some potato chip because that's how you can get a well-rounded meal. <laughs> Okay, well, we got that one out of the way. Remember our conversation here earlier? Okay. All right. Um, another quick announcement on our song 265. We're only singing the first and the last verses. Okay, so be, be prepared for that. Let's stand together for our call to worship and remain standing for our song. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. This is the day which the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let us worship God. I will extol you, O Lord, for you have drawn me up and did not let my foes rejoice over me. O Lord, my God, I cried to you for help and you have healed me. O Lord, you brought up my soul from Sheol, restored me to life from among, among those gone down to the pit. Sing praises to the Lord, O you, his faithful ones, and give thanks to his holy name, for his anger is but for a moment. His favor is for a lifetime. Weeping may linger for the night, but joy comes with the morning. As for me, I said in my prosperity, I shall never be moved. By your favor, O Lord, you had established me as a strong mountain. You hid your face, I was dismayed. To you, O Lord, I cried, and to the Lord I made supplication. What profit is there in my death if I go down to the pit? Will the dust praise you? Will it tell of your faithfulness? Hear, O Lord, and be gracious to me. O Lord, be my helper. You have turned my mourning into dancing. You have taken off my sackcloth and clothed me with joy, so that my soul may praise you and not be silent. 
O Lord, my God, I will give thanks to you forever. I love your grace, I love your mercy. Love the way you help me when I call. I love the truth, I love the power of your name. But you know I love your presence most of all. My soul takes refuge in the shadow of your wings. Close to you is where I want to be. You are my strength, you are my God, you are my King. And what I want is what you want for me. I love your grace, I love your mercy. The way you help me when I call. I love the truth, I love the power of your name. But you know I love your presence most of all. But you know I love your presence. But you know who I love your presence most of all. One more time. But you know I love your presence most of all. During the normal time of moment with the children, so we're going to have them all in here to give you an, an exhibition of what uh, took place this week, just a small sampling. We also want to welcome back Dr. Sam Roberts, who's back there taking notes, so I hope I don't do, I hope I don't do anything wrong. I'm feeling a lot of pressure right now, Carol. And, all right. For our time of prayer, let us draw near to God with sincerity of heart and full assurance of faith. Our guilty hearts sprinkled clean, our bodies washed with pure water. Let us confess our sin. Let us pray together silently, and then I'll close. Eternal God, our judge and redeemer, we confess that we have tried to hide from you for we have done wrong. We have lived for ourselves and apart from you. We have turned from our neighbors and refused to bear the burdens of others. We have ignored the pain of the world and passed by the hungry, the poor, and the oppressed. In your great mercy, Forgive our sins and free us from selfishness that we may choose your will and obey your commandments. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Who is a physician to condemn? Only Christ. And Christ died for us. Christ rose for us. Christ reigns in power for us. Christ prays for us. Anyone who is in Christ is a new creation. The old life is gone. A new life has begun. Know that you are forgiven and be at peace this morning. Let's stand together as we sing the Gloria Patri.
fabulous week at Vacation Bible School this past week. I would like to ask all of the children and the song leaders to come forward to sing a few of the VBS songs for you and anyone else who knows the songs. Yes, I mean you, Storyteller Carol and Top Chef Carol. While they're making their way here, we wanna say thank you to the whole congregation for allowing us to be able to have VBS. And in particular to those who gave their time, maybe up here, to those of us who gave our time for the kids this week. We had 49 kids here this week and we limited our registration to 50. So we did awesome. Now, some of you might be wondering what a food truck has to do with God. Turns out that our DJ Cupcake over there kept a food journal of recipes from the Bible. The main theme of the week is to remember that God provides for all of us. The kids raised $222.95 for the Presbyterian Hunger Program. And if you brought your boxes back today, you can put them in the offering place um, when they come around. You can learn more about this program at presbyterianmission.org. Now, let's hear about some of God's food miracles from the food truck party. We're on. Yep.
the participation this past week that uh, you are able to feed them with the word, with your word. Your word is the only thing that lasts forever. So, Lord, as they go off now, Lord, may you continue, Lord, to bless them, cover their families, Lord, and give them wisdom and knowledge as they learn to lead a life that is pleasing to you. We ask all of this in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus, who is the Christ. Amen. Morning, everyone. Oh, yeah, I love that. Everybody's happy. Uh, we will now do the prayer for illumination. Oh, we saw something else. Let us pray together. God, our helper, by your Holy Spirit, open our minds that as the scriptures are read, and your word is proclaimed, may we be led into your truth and taught your will for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Scriptures today come from Paul's letter, what we think it was Paul's letter, to the church at Rome. We'll just do verses 1. And two, and he writes, therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is his good, pleasing, and perfect will. The gospel comes from, from the book of Luke, first chapter, verses 46 through 55. This is when Mary who has been visited by the Holy Spirit, and she goes to visit her cousin, Elizabeth. And this is Mary's response to Elizabeth. And Mary said, my soul magnifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God, my savior. For he's looked upon with favor on the lowness of his servant. Surely from now on, all generations will call me blessed. For the mighty one has done great things for me and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thorns and lifted up the lowly. He's filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. You know, um, as we come this day, we are, uh, first I'd like to thank you for, I know the session has to improve it, so I'd like to just thank everyone for giving me this opportunity again to come to stand before you and proclaim God's word. And I also like to do a special thanks to Pastor Bill because you know, when you have your congregation, who do you entrust them to? And that is something that's really, it's really important. And I don't know, I don't know whether uh, any message that I've given, I, I pray that God gives me wisdom and I'm led by the Spirit 
that whatever message that God gives me, that it somehow brings something that will enable you as you go through your week to give you some hope and some 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 peace as as we look, as we are aware of all the things that's going on in this world. I mean, as you turn on the news, as you read the newspaper, as you just look around, all of the pain and suffering that's happening. But I just come just to kind of remind you that God is still God. And God is still doing what only God can do. And even in the midst of all the craziness that's going on, if we can keep our eyes focused on God, then um, the troubles are not going to go away. All of the world's problems are not going to be solved. I think that will only happen when Jesus returns. But it will allow you some, some modem of peace that you can get through the day not worried about the things that are that is probably beyond your control, but realizing that nothing is beyond God's control. Now, Lord, we pray that the words of my mouth and meditations of my heart will be acceptable in your sight, for truly, God, you are our strength and our redeemer. Amen. You know, uh, that scripture from Luke is called, what? Everybody knows that. The Magnificat comes from magnify. Magnify the Lord. You know, last week we talked about singing out of tribulation. Today we sing out of transformation that our lives are being transformed. What does it mean to have your life transformed? What does it mean to transform, you know, um, it's kind of like a metamorphosis. How, you know, you um, I I have some some plants in my garden, and and if I don't keep an eye on them, the you know the butterfly flies by, a moth, and he leaves a little egg, and then all of a sudden you got something that's eating your plant. But then if you wait a little longer, it metamorphoses into a beautiful butterfly which is beautiful, but I don't really care for it because it's just ate all my vegetables. But, um, but you know, uh, last week we understood, we heard that as we cry out to God, that God hears us. And God brings back into remembrance that the time when we cried out before, that he always hears us. He always answers. May not in the way that we want the answer that we want, but always in the answer that we need. Uh, Paul says, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. How do you live a transformed life? It's interesting when I think of marriage life, she says that she is blessed, you know, not, you know, like we do today, you know, we look on Facebook, somebody says hashtag bless. No, not that kind of bless. I'm talking serious blessings but but how can a person knowing her state in life knowing the fact that she is still unwed and she's about to have a child how could she feel blessed how could she sing and say oh magnify the lord you know in her current condition in her current state but as as i was contemplating that I realized something as I continued to read her song that she felt blessed because she could see in her womb someone that was going to transform the world. Someone who could see a world without poverty, without hunger, a world without exploitation, a world where everyone lives in peace and in harmony. That's who she was carrying. I think sometimes we, we kind of not really think about it. Think about who Mary was bringing into the world. Jesus, Jesus. 
you know, and how could you not feel blessed when you are carrying the savior of the world? And that savior came teaching, he came teaching us, teaching us the way, teaching us the truth, teaching us how that we could truly live a life that was transformed. And what does it mean to live a transformed life? You know, we are in church every Sunday, but we leave the church. And, and, and as I said, I know that we all have different beginnings. We all have different lives, but, and we tend to focus on those differences. But if we all share this common thing, we all share the common knowledge of Jesus Christ. Why can't we live in that harmony? Why can't we live in the shared life that we share, the life that we share in Christ instead of all the differences, all the things that separate us? I sometimes have the opportunity um, as I will watch television, I will, uh, and I don't know where you guys do that. I, I, I'm going to watch the news. So I'll turn and I'll watch CNN, then I'll watch CNBC, then I'll watch Fox. And then I'll ask, are they reporting on the same thing? You know, are they really reporting on the same thing? You know, and I'm going, how did we get here? What was the path that we took? Were we following Christ? Did Christ lead us here? I seriously doubt it. But then I think again, and Christ said, y'all thought I came to bring peace? Uh-uh. Came to bring a sword. And there's going to be separation. Why? Because some's going to believe me and some are going to follow and others will not. What camp are you in? You know, I always say, if, if I'm a Christian, if I really am a Christian, my life should somehow, somebody should be able to know that I'm a Christian other than me, you know. I, 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 used to, I taught Bible study at the, at the VA hospital and I, and I asked the, 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 the vets a question. I said, if you were put on trial and you had to prove that you were a Christian, who would be the first person you called and you can't call Jesus? Think about that. Who would be the first person that you'd call to your defense to prove that you're a Christian? Think about that. I thought about that and I realized ain't a whole lot of people you can call. Now I have another question. I think that we all have heroes, you know. If Someone asked you, what I want you to do is to, here's a piece of paper, write down in order the people, or I mean real or imagined, that you see as heroes, you know, one through five. They don't have to be a real person, you know, I don't know, Superman, Batman, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the Powerpuff Girls. It doesn't matter. But how many people would have Jesus on that list as a hero? During his day, folks did not see him as a hero. They came looking for something else. They, looking, they were looking for someone who was going to be strong and mighty and, and wipe out the enemy. But he came talking about love and forgiveness. I go, what kind of hero is that? But in church, you talk about peace, love, forgiveness. You know, one thing that I believe that both Mary's song and Jesus's life kind of taught us. It teaches us that God loves us. It teaches us 
that God not only loves us, but God commune with us. But the fact that God never leaves us the way that God finds us. You do not have an encounter with the God, uh, an encounter with Jesus and leave the same. You cannot truly have an encounter and leave the same. I just don't think you can. Remember Zacchaeus, the tax collector, hated by everybody? Jesus invited himself to his house for dinner. And after, just after sitting with Jesus for dinner, he decided, oh, man, my life has been wretched. I've been taking advantage of people. So I'm going to return everything that I've stolen from everyone. And instead of becoming an outcast in society, now he's accepted by his, by his, by his uh, fellow men because his life changed. Moses ran into God at a burning bush, gave him enough courage to go stand up in front of Pharaoh and says, let my people go. Paul on his way to do what Paul was doing, ran into Jesus on the road to Damascus, changed his life. The woman at the well went there for some water and she bumped into Jesus and her life was changed. Blind, lepers, all of these people encountered the living God and never went away the same. So as I continually ask myself, am I being changed? Am I being changed? Am, am, am I able to love unconditionally? Sometimes, you know, uh, someone asked me, he said, uh, do your wife know you tell stories about her? And I told her, if you don't come with me, I'm going to use you. But oftentimes it drives my family crazy because they're, you know, I'm, I say, well, how, how do you not find some good in that? Why do you always see the world through negativity? You see, that, that is, you know, when you turn on the news, 99.9% .9 is all negative stuff. You know, you know, garbage in, garbage out. You know, garbage in, garbage out. So we need to somehow renew our mind. And how do you do that? You know, well, you know, I read my Bible once in a while, but. And I pray, but well, what are you praying for? Who are you praying for? You know, I, I, I just, I try desperately to understand why we call ourselves Christians. We call ourselves, we say that we believe in God and we believe that Jesus was the son of God and, and, and we look at the life that Jesus led and we saw what happened and yet somehow our lives are not transformed. We're not transformed. We're living the same way that we've lived for years. It, you know, What will it take for the church to take the lead in the world instead of saying, well, you know, I think we need to be, um, what's the word we always use? Uh, somebody help me out here. Uh, we need to be, <laughs> somehow we have to conform to the world. First scripture said, be not conform to this world, but be transformed. We don't have to follow the world. And if you're following the world, you, you excuse my English, if you're following the world, you ain't following Jesus. You're not. What do we do? How do we go against this? It's, it's hard. It is not easy. It is not easy, folks, being a Christian. 
It's not easy. Jesus being Jesus took him to the cross. All of his disciples ended up horrendously killed and murdered. It's not easy. But do you want to do easy? Or do you want to do right? Most of us want to do easy. You know, Mary's song magnifies the Savior who loved the whole world with a love that came to make creation whole. He wanted to bring down the pride, the people, the, the, the great, you know, but, but you see when, when, when this song is not saying, I want to trade, eat them on a trade places. I don't want to take the poor and make them rich and take the rich to make them poor. No, he says, if the poor, if the rich would somehow stop thinking about themselves and think about God, and neighbor, love the Lord your God, love your neighbor as yourself, then that that's levels the playing field. I love the kids thinking about singing three, was it five one, five, five, one, five, two, one, five, two, thank you. The five, two, one. You know, and, and, you know, and so God wants us to stop looking at the distorted worldview. And he want all us to be blessed. Not this hashtag blessed where we're getting everything we want, but we are blessed because we know the Savior. We are blessed because we know that the Savior lives in us. And because the Savior lives in us, we can see the Savior in others. So let us sing transformation today, sing transformation. And if you're not being transformed, uh, just, just work at it a little harder. God will get you there. It's not something you can do by yourself. You cannot do it alone. It takes God. And that paraclete, the Holy Spirit, that will enter you and change your life. Seeing transformation. The word of God. For the people of God, thanks be to God. Choose the humble and raise them high. You choose the weak and make them strong. You hear the brokenness inside and give us life. Same love that set the captives free. Same love that opened eyes to see is calling us all by name. You are
proud Come to me now Same love that spread the captives free Same love that opened eyes to see He is calling us all by name You are calling us all by name Same God that spread the heavens wide same God that was crucified is calling the soul by name. You are calling the soul by name. You're calling, you're calling, you're calling us to the cross. You're calling, you're calling. You're calling us to the cross. Same love that set the captives free. Same love that opened eyes to see is calling us all by name. You are calling us all by name. Same God that spread the heavens wide. Same God that was crucified. something of what God has given us. God
others to make this world like you intended it to be in your good creation. Thank you for this opportunity in Jesus' name. Amen. our time of communion we're going to use option b when you open the book you'll see that'll make sense to you it's the second line option b we have several joys and concerns today i encourage you during the week to look on our church's web page and uh, we update that as often as we get new information so it's pretty current as current as what we know in the office so please check that out be current on the joys and concerns that we have as a congregation and uh, so that we can be praying together for those special needs as they become available to us let's let's pray together father thank you that you hear and answer our prayers that as we come before you we come before a loving God who cares about his creation and about his people. Father, we're praying today for Dave Clifford, Angela's brother-in-law who's struggling with advanced cancer. We're praying for the family of Dwayne Newton, Diane Porsche, Janet Fry, Joan Kirshner, who passed away this week. We're praying for Karen Lewis, who's struggling after cancer treatment, and for Greg Sayer, as he has gone home, but still in need of our prayers. Father, we thank you that you are the God of creation, and you are the God who lives in our hearts. Thank you, in Jesus' name. Amen. As we prepare, they will come from the west and from, and from the south and sit at the table of God. that he was betrayed. Jesus sat with his disciples and after he'd given thanks, he took the bread and he broke it. He said, this is my body, which has been broken for you. Do this often in remembrance of me. And in a like manner, after supper, he took the cup. And he said, this is the cup of the new. In my blood, do this often in remembrance of me. So each time they the cup and eat the bread celebrate celebrate the life death the direction of our living savior until he comes again these are the gifts of god As they pass these out, I don't know whether you are familiar with these cups, but they can be a little difficult at times to open. And if you would, there's a little cellophane on the top that if you pull that off first, it reveals 
the wafer underneath. This is the body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Take, eat all of it. The blood of Jesus was shed for you and for me for the remissions of sin. Thank you. Almighty God, we thank you that in your great love, you fed us with the spiritual food and drink of the body and blood of your Savior, Jesus Christ, and have given us a foretaste of the heavenly banquet. Grant us this sacrament. May we be a comfort in our affliction and a pledge in our inheritance, in that the kingdom where there is no death, neither sorrow nor crying, but the fullness of joy with all of your saints through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us repeat the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory ever. Amen. Yes. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may be do the perfect and acceptable will of God. Now go in peace and may the love of God, the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and the communion of the Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide in your life both now and forever. People of God said, Amen. Peace of Christ be with you. And also be with you. <laughs>